Hello, good people of YouTube. Mount Patton here. Today, talking about a ship that many, many players, myself included, thought was going to be absolutely horrendous upon its release. And I mean, you can go back to the announcements, the dev blog videos, the um, early access with the lower tier German destroyers. Many, many players were ragging on this ship right here and its uh, Techline counterparts up until its full release, this update. That is, of course, the Tier 10 German destroyer, the Elbing. So, if you don't know, the whole point of the German DD split and this new German DD line is that these aren't really DDs. These are small light cruisers. In this case, the guns certainly don't feel like light cruiser guns, and we'll get to that in a moment. So overall traits of the line is that these are very large destroyers. I mean, I'm, they're, they're light cruisers in all actuality, but they're in the, the DD class, but they're massive DDs, kind of like the Apollo Emilio or the Kabatoff. There's some of the larger DDs in the game that's reflected on their size, their armor composition, and their guns. And they are designed, according to the devs, to hunt down soul light cruisers and quite simply murder them, which they are quite good at. They are very, very good at that, especially the Elbing here. The Elbing in this ship he right here, I've two-shotted in Austin. It was a beautiful sight. I accidentally deleted the footage. I know people are going to be like, oh, well, huh, that's kind of convenient, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, once you get your hands on this ship, and I got some footage um, that sh they'll be playing throughout this video that shows that the guns definitely have that performance. And by two shotted, I mean two salvos. He showed me his broadside, got one salvo off, drained half of his health, got the next salvo off, finished him off. I mean, it is an Austin too, not the most well armored ship, but an example of what these destroyers can do. Now, the Elbing is definitely the best one out of the bunch. There's no, like, jewel throughout the split line to where it shines brighter than the rest, but the Elbing shines the brightest. Despite, again, many players thinking that it was just going to be DOA when they got released, thankfully we were quite, quite wrong. I kind of got the feeling once I played the Schultz quite a bit, I, I, in fact, played the Schultz so much I didn't have to spend any free XP getting the Elbing. I had enough XP on the Schultz from the early access event that I could just go straight to the Elbing. And it's, it's quite good. It is very good. So the Elbing has six 150mm guns. With the build that I have on it, I have a 5.9 second reload time, which is very nice. I do also have Luchins on this ship. So once I hit 130, 130, 135 shell hits, sorry, 140 shell hits, I get another 7.5% boost to the reload time. And then I also have Fearless Brawler in here as well, which means that after the ship's been detected, we get another 10% boost to the reload time. So we get almost a 20% boost to the reload time once all of that gets triggered. And of course, that is with Luchins and Fearless Brawler. So if you have Luchins, I mean, Luchins goes great with any German ship. So that's definitely a commander I would pick up. But anyway, on top of those 150mm guns... Oh, I forgot to mention too, these guns are insanely accurate. That's another trait of the line. They are literally just, you want the shell to go there? Okay, no problem. The Elbing has a 62 meter dispersion at 13.3 kilometers. S 62 meters. That is a lot better than any other destroyer. Even the other most accurate destroyers, that their dispersion is like 100 and I think 30, 120 meters. 62. That's it. They are laser accurate guns. And they have great AP, like I was mentioning earlier. The AP on the on these ships, first off, it's flying at the barrels at 960 meters a second, has the improved AP pin, and it does a maximum of 4,100 damage. With the insane pins that these shells have, you can easily just merc light cruisers, even some heavy cruisers too, if they aren't too careful. Even battleships. You can puncture the upper armor belt of just about every battleship in this game with the Elbing. And most of the other split destroyers, unless you run across something that's like dummy thick, like maybe some of the lower tier 
um, dreadnought style battleships, which I don't think I think uh, the line splits at tier six, so you don't really see too many of those um, when you're going through this. Yeah, the line splits at tier six, so you can't really see much of those. But I mean, you can see some if you're at tier seven. But anyway, like I was like I was saying, the AP pin is ridiculous. The amount of damage that the AP shells do is ridiculous. There is no need to fire HE in these ships. In fact, rip your one key off when you're playing these destroyers. Forget it exists. Even if they're bow onto you, aim for their superstructure. You'll pin it for 2, 3k. If it's like a battleship, if it's a cruiser, same thing. But if it's a destroyer, just murder them. Like, literally, the AP is that good. Even when overpinning destroyers, you're still doing 2, 3k. If they angle correctly, like uh, Marceau did to me in the Elbing, 6k it just murders them so fast um but that being said of course if you do come across a ship with some dpm like a marceau or a Kleber or a kabatosk or a harugamil yeah sure from close in you're probably going to get spanked pretty hard but from the longer distances with a 960 meter a second velocity from your ap shells uh, you definitely have the advantage there. Plus, your shells are a lot more accurate than theirs. And that's where the Elbing really tends to shine. Also, they do get torpedoes. And this was a point of much contention. Uh, they had some pretty decent torpedoes beforehand. But then they got swapped to what's commonly called sea mines. They are very slow. They don't travel at 50 knots. They're spotted from 1.2 kilometers away. They've got a 13.5 kilometer range. But, I mean... They went from more of an offensive armament to more of a opportunistic ar armament, if you will. Kind of like an aerial denial. They do reload in 90 seconds, which means that most of the time, by the time these torpedoes have gotten to the target, if you're firing them at like 12 or 13 kilometers away, your torpedoes are almost ready to go again. So that's kind of nice. They do hit pretty hard. They do 60,533 maximum damage when they do hit. And I've used them, again, kind of opportunistically. They just throw them towards a gap where you think some ships might be. Or if, like, uh, the beginning part of this video, there's a bunch of ships all lining up in a row. And they're kind of just chilling there. Throw them at them. You'll get a hit or two, bring in some nice damage. What is probably the most surprising thing about these ships is that at higher tier, their AA is quite good. I, it's pretty darn surprising to me. Uh, the Elbing especially, she has almost a 7 kilometer AA range without even building into it. 7 kilometers. Like, yeah, that's really good. Really good for anything nowadays, let, uh, let alone a German DD. Plus with uh, DFAA and the same clip where you should have seen the Marceau get murdered. Uh, there's an FDR in that video too, and I'll throw some clips up from that game as well. And this has been one of the more effective ships with dealing with FDRs playing. So this match, another match that I played with an FDR. And it it genuinely does make them pay. Partly because of the 7 kilometer range with FDR slow playing. It takes them a hot minute to get out of your AA range. With DFAA going, you're throwing up a pretty decent amount of flak when your AA is intact. And it's quite good. It, again, pretty surprising to me as well. And the Elbing is also kind of sneaky too texture into 6.5 kilometers if you build into it however of course being a gunboat dd that doesn't really matter but it does certainly help when you are trying to disengage from a fight it does get smokescreen too as well uh, unfortunately no hydroacoustic search that is something that was removed from them early on and then they replaced it with the smokescreen so the elbing is a really 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 good tier 10 destroy it's, it's quite different and something that I think a lot of players, myself included, had to get over with had to get over with these ships is that they really aren't destroyers. You don't really play them like destroyers. At least the way I've been playing the Elbing and having pretty darn good success is that they're more of a mid-range ship. And I know something like the Cabrosk and the Kleber, you play those mid-range too because they are gunboats and they are open water gunboats, but the Elbing really do play it like a cruiser, and playing it like a cruiser has been quite beneficial to me. So I'm sitting at about a hundred and I think 105, 110,000 damage in the Elbing so far, which um, for a DD for me is quite good, quite very good for me in a DD. And keep this in mind too: this isn't a ship with you know a lot of 
HG spamming potential. In fact, it has no HG spamming potential because of the reload time, and its HG shells are quite anemic, and a chance of fire isn't really there. It's got an 8% chance of starting a fire with a 6 second reload time. So, yeah, it's not really there. It's just such a unique ship, such a different playstyle, that it's quite fun to play. It's one of my more favorite DDs to play right now. Um, out of the higher tier DDs, and that's coming from someone who plays a lot of Cap Ross and Kleber. Uh, Cl uh, but again, I'm not trying to lie to you and tell you that the rest of the line is great. It certainly is not. It's more of what we saw with the Italian cruisers and the Italian battleships. How the lower tier ones are not that fantastic. It starts to get a little bit good around tier eight. The Schultz was definitely a lot better than the tier eight. The Schultz, I was really able to start getting some good damage numbers in. And after I played it more and more and more and got a better hang, hang of the play style, it was definitely performing much better. Now with the Elbing, I mean, good lord, it's it's a fantastic ship. You can, again, just murder destroyers if you if you surprise them and if you know how to aim. It, that's the one thing that I really like about the ship. It rewards good aiming. It rewards good aiming so, so, so much. If you know where to aim on battleships, you know where they, their um, their thinner armor is. You know where the plates around the bow and the stern are at that you can pin through. Uh, light cruisers, you know their armor layout. Know to aim for their citadel. This will absolutely murder light cruisers. Destroyers too, for like the French destroyers. If you know their armor layout, know where to hit them in their chunky spots. Same with the Russian destroyers. To where your shells can actually pin, and then you can start to do things like five to six k a salvo on them. Oh, oh. The ship gets pretty darn nasty. Now, it's not all sunshine and roses. The ship does have downsides. It, there's no heal. It's an absolutely massive target. There's no heal. You have a lot of hit points, though, coming in at 35,000, I'm sorry, 34,400 hit points. Um, but again, it's massive. It's slow. No hydroacoustic search, which is something that just about every high tier German ship has, but not the Elbing and the uh, German split line, unfortunately. Um, and again, it's a massive target, which means that once you do get caught out in the open by cruisers and other destroyers, it's not the best time. You have the smoke screen to, to try and disengage, but there's so much radar at tier 10 that unfortunately a lot of times it's not too useful, but when you can use it, it is a lifesaver. So overall, the L being a great ship, definitely worth the grind. Again, this is a destroyer that can punch well, well above its weight class with its amazing guns. And it rewards good aiming, good positioning, and good ambush style and techniques. And nice, it, it's definitely a slower play destroy because of its speed. But that slower, more tactical gameplay, it definitely does reward that. And one that I would suggest that you guys maybe try to grind up. I know most of you guys are battleship players because I'm a battleship main. But this is a pretty nice destroyer line to go down and get to the tier 10. Again, not the best line to play. Hanging there to around tier eight starts to get better there, but again, definitely a fun, a fun destroyer to get to with the Elbing. All right, guys, that's my thoughts on the Elbing. Just wanted to get that out there. I know it's taken these quite some time to get to it. We had a lot come out in this update with grand battles and the Issei and the Tone and all the stuff they've been throwing at us over the past couple of weeks. So again, I apologize for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful Wednesday. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 30,000 subs, just past 26,700 a few days ago. And I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.